When the 10th International Conference on AIDS was held in Japan recently, it was the first time this annual gathering had been convened in Asia. Crown Prince Naruhito and Princess Masako opened the proceedings. Japan itself has one of the lowest rates of HIV infection in the world. Prime Minister Tomichi Moriyama sounded a note of caution. The cumulative number of HIV infections to date exceed 17 million worldwide. The advent of acquired immune deficiency syndrome means Thailand is becoming concerned about its tourist industry. In addition to its more traditional attractions, over recent years, Thailand's become increasingly known for its sex shows. Now, the entire image of the country as a tourist destination is under threat. Thailand's first documented AIDS case in 1984 came from its homosexual community. From there, the disease spread to intravenous drug users. Heroin addiction is a significant problem in many Asian countries and one which may have facilitated the rapid spread of the virus into the prostitute community. In the past few years, the notoriously frank and booming sex industry has become as much a liability as a lure. If the sexually transmitted human immunodeficiency virus makes Thailand seem a high-risk destination, then not only will sex tourists be discouraged from visiting the country, but overseas businessmen and investors may be driven away as well. As for the prostitutes, women diagnosed HIV positive are usually sent home to their rural villages. In some northern Thai provinces, 20% of young heterosexual men are now infected. And recently, AIDS has been occurring in the children of married couples. A study by the Asian Development Bank and the United Nations Development Programme investigated the economic impact of the disease on AIDS-affected households in Asia. High health care costs meant that three quarters of them were in debt, and a worsening epidemic would mean ever more families needing state assistance. India had fewer than a thousand cases of HIV infections in 1987. Now there are said to be more than a million. Asia certainly can't afford to let the epidemic spread unchecked, but prevention and control will cost money for the distribution of information and condoms, for blood supply programs and so on. In countries already burdened by extreme poverty, the social and economic costs could become too horrific to bear. What makes India particularly vulnerable to the spread of HIV is its migrant populations. Workers may pick up the virus in the towns and take it back with them to the villages. The survey shows that households suffer financially, whether it's the wage earner affected or not. If his wife dies, a husband may simply be unused to managing the housekeeping money. HIV will come at the very worst moment for India. HIV will make all the country's development programs that more difficult to achieve. The Asian Development Bank study attempted to assess not only the direct medical costs of caring for the sick, but also the indirect costs of assistance for survivors and the lack of productivity through a sick and reduced labor force. The findings will be presented to Asian policymakers to help them make informed decisions about how to allocate resources. You have a fixed budget constraint. You have only X amount of dollars. Now, how are you going to use that? Are you going to use it for TB? Are you going to for HIV? Or are you going to use it for schools? For whatever. So you have to decide what you're going to use it for. And the reason why economic research such as this one is so important is because it allows us to come up with the most cost-effective solutions. Given that even the existing million HIV infections will develop into full-blown AIDS eventually, the prognosis for 10 years' time looks grim. The worst effects of the epidemic will be emerging in the very period when India is aiming to upgrade itself economically and to reduce poverty. The growing international tourist industry, together with mass migration of labor, have helped spread HIV to the Philippines. Surprisingly, the survey indicated that most of the estimated 40,000 cases were in the middle income bracket, well-educated professionals and overseas contract workers returning home. The Research Institute for Tropical Medicine in Manila 
found that most workers diagnosed HIV positive were immediately dismissed by their employers. Once a member of the family is infected, then they would, uh, the income would dwindle. They have to resort to, to borrowings, to mortgaging of their properties and eventually sold it. And this is especially true among overseas contract workers. So far, the numbers of HIV-positive patients are small here compared to India and Thailand. But as AIDS cases worsen, they'll increasingly put a burden on the Philippines' already overstretched healthcare service. The feeling is that governments have been slow to respond. I think very little attention has been paid to uh, the socio-economic impact of the disease on uh, household and the society. Japan has been fortunate so far, with only 764 cases of full-blown AIDS in a population of 125 million. Nevertheless, Japanese officials are keen to increase public consciousness of the issue now. A key factor in the low rate of infection in Japan may be their so-called condom culture. The contraceptive pill is virtually banned to protect domestic condom manufacturers. The immediate value of the recent conference has been to raise awareness in a society where hospitals and hotels still turn away AIDS sufferers. What's certain is that to avoid devastating social and economic problems, Asia must give HIV AIDS the priority it so urgently needs on the development agenda.